Okay. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. So nice to see you today. Okay, today's um, session is about, uh, actually, uh, I wanna talk about two kind of subjects. So one is um, gaming architecture on AWS. Uh, this is a, a little bit a deep dive knowledge session. Actually, some, I will show the how to uh, design your gaming architecture on cloud. And the next session is about our gaming services. Um, we have a, a game lift as a game server uh, services. And also uh, we have a client engines, uh, name is Lumberyard. And I will show some uh, demos and also knowledge about that. Okay, uh, this is a gaming architecture on AWS. Um, so, uh, so at this, in this is a content, uh, how I wanna talk about what kind of gaming features are available on cloud and what kind of you know, uh, game types uh, could be run uh, in, on AWS and how to design your architectures uh, based on game types. I think it's a, you already familiar with game types like uh, session based or term based or MMORPs or something. So uh, based on such kind of you know game types, I think it's uh, our, I, I, I wanna show that it's a more standard uh, reference architecture. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it, c it could be uh, uh, meaningful for you all. And also I wanna show that it's analysis systems, analytic processes uh, on AWS. Well, uh, when you finish it, uh, you know, implement the game servers, uh, usually you need some analy analytics and an analysis process because, well, this analytics is really important for uh, especially uh, game industries uh, to increase your revenues. It's a strong, you know, you know actually uh, analysis result will impact on your um, revenues of the games, uh, especially mobile or something. So I think it's a, if you uh, have any experience about uh, uh, gaming companies, then I think you can agree uh, in my opinion. Anyway, analytics is re really important, but it's some point is that it's uh, always the analytics is not easy process in your on-prem architecture. But if you use uh, uh, cloud services, it's become a piece of cake, okay? So <coughs> let's go to the uh, game services on AWS. So there is so many active game companies on AWS. Uh, this, these are uh, some parts of that uh, list. Uh, I think it's, uh, you are very familiar with the names, uh, Gumi, uh, Sega, and Supercell, and Nintendo, and Nexon. Nexon, do you know Nexon? Have you ever heard that? As Nexon is the top leading uh, game company in Korea. Yeah, actually, it's a very, very big company. And Notido is, um, yeah. So um, actually, you are using a top tier game companies around the world, and many of the many of those games actually are currently uh, running on AWS. Uh, one of the example is a Supercell is a game. So actually, they are running on uh, USA region, uh, so worldwide games, but it's running in uh, one region. Yeah, so. Actually, it's, um, uh, in one game, uh, there are so many features, like a leaderboard or seven game state, new stickers, or their cast, or uh, UCG, UGC, and transaction requiring, and you know, storing character data or something. So it's, um, <coughs> the most of commonly used functions in game services are not required to build servers. But if you use the uh, managed services provided by AWS, you can easily implement those features. So um, anybody is, uh, is really familiar with AWS services? Oh, yeah, cool. So I think it's, um, you know the terms um, managed services, right? Managed services means that it's, uh, you don't need to care about their maintenance and operations or backup or something. Just to, you, you can use that as uh, their you know, features and without concerning high availability architecture, scalability or something, okay? Uh, for example, 
uh, we have uh, Dynamo databases as a uh, NoSQL, you know, managed services. And um, in many cases, I think it's a game to developers prefer NoSQL uh, because it's, um, in most cases, I think it's, um, yeah, you can use NoSQL in every actually game types, even though um, MMORPs or IPs games. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's actually some, I started uh, my career uh, in gaming uh, industries about 20 years ago. At the time, so there is no data, you know, LDMS in game, you know, architectures. Actually, we used um, NoSQL library, uh, like a Buckley, you know, uh, DB library, and uh, so every game data in the servers is was stored in uh, Buckley DB in the local machines, and they transferred the data into uh, them some uh, main, you know, databases. At that time, as uh, usually. Uh, we uh, started to use um, MS SQL. Yeah, it's, um, it's a very uh, primitive, primitive version. So actually, it's, uh, at the time, it's, uh, uh, RDBMS is not a main uh, database for game services. It's just uh, used for uh, game analytics, analytics. Anyway, so but it changed to this, um, there's some you know, trend uh, of development is uh, what changed to use uh, the uh, RDBMS as a main database of so game servers. There's a big changes. But nowadays, about uh, 10 years from about 17 years ago, uh, actually I insist that um, NoSQL is enough for your game databases. You don't need to use uh, RDBMS at all. Uh, RDBMS is good. It can handle the transactions or something and you easily integrate uh, with, uh, you know, analytics uh, processes, but the problem is always the scalability. So about, a, you know, uh, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, well, the number of users were, was only about, you know, uh, 100,000. As um, one big, you know, LDMS uh, could handle such traffic. Uh, as a master databases, but nowadays we cannot, you know, hand, you know, meet the requirement of the, you know, number of you know, current or traffic nowadays. So you need is a NoSQL, and also a NoSQL is a one great part of your implementation. Actually, anyway, okay. But uh, so we have uh, actually, but we have a uh, uh, great uh, managed services for such cases. It's a uh, RDMS, but as uh, we call it as Aurora, actually 100 compatibility, it has a 100 compatibility with MySQL and also PostSQL, but uh, it is actually uh, quite easily scalable and you can use that as some for massive, you know, concurrent user, uh, you know, requirement. Anyway, so, okay, let's go back, let's go over to the uh, game content storage is like this. Uh, we have uh, at three, and that is a, a cloud repositories. And um, also we have uh, DNS, uh, DNS services as, uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, as uh, CDN services, as a uh, name is CloudFront. I think it's a, you, you usually, um, well, client, client should download new version of, you know, uh, game, game, you know, client. Uh, and as in this case, uh, DLC contains, you know, deployment uh, distributions. You can use uh, you can use these uh, cloud repositories and uh, CDN, uh, CloudFront. Uh, so also uh, after launching the game, uh, if you want to put new content into the cloud store, yeah, the player will be able to download and play the new uh, some uh, new version of the game. So it's actually uh, you actually added new contents in your games. Uh, yes, uh, so in such cases, you can use S3 as our uh, object storage uh, managed, you know, object storages. That's a really great, and um, is um, you don't worry about uh, scalability or uh, high availability. Uh, you can just use S3 uh, storages and uh, storage services. And also, it can be used in conjunction with CloudFront. Uh, as a CDN services, as a, it really is. It's, it's, a, it's just a, you know by clicking several uh, buttons that you can connect the CloudFront to F3, 
That's a really easy. And the um, next thing is uh, so storing game status. It's, um, usually some, in cases you can use uh, uh, databases or NoSQL. Um, well, one of our recommendation is uh, uh, Dynamo databases is um, NoSQL uh, managed services. So for example, it's a, maybe I think in, uh, um, you need to uh, store some game state uh, that is included, includes uh, usually player data or uh, character status and also uh, money inventory information or scores, uh, ranking information. That is you can store those kind of you know, information into the uh, managed services. Yeah, that is um, uh, Dynamo databases. The other thing is a game logic. Uh, maybe I think it's a, uh, uh, hmm. uh, have you ever heard that is a Lambda? Lambda, as a, as a, it's, a, it's a kind of a computing cloud services. Uh, you, that is a, we so call it as serverless architecture. That means uh, you don't need to care about servers. You don't need to set up servers at all. Just to, uh, if you unload your clothes into the Lambda, then it's a Lambda is execute your logics, you know, based on your, uh, the uh, event request. Uh, so, so if it, uh, the game logic is um, uh, stateless, then you can easily run your logics by using Lambda, and then you get uh, huge advantages of a serverless architecture. So, because you don't, uh, even though it's, uh, I think it's uh, you, you know this uh, virtualized servers on cloud. Well, uh, everything is uh, quite managed services, but you need some uh, configurations for high availability and also scalability. We have uh, auto scaling uh, functionalities, features for the instances, but in such cases, you need to configure the scalability. But if you use lambdas, you don't need to do that. You don't need to care about the scalability or HA at all. Because, because lambda will scale out, scale in automatically based on request. So, uh, okay, so for example, uh, if you wanna calculate rankings from your scores or you, uh, some, uh, you want to give some of your items to your friends or upload uh, the items to the cloud. So it's kind of, it's, uh, those kind of actual you know, game logics in the, in the world they certainly uh, can be run uh, in AWS Lambda. Uh, AWS Lambda enables these operations to uh, be performed without a server. And so just, you know, uh, it requires only uh, you just um, upload the code uh, that you want to execute, uh, actually in the form of a function and a core of, core of function. Uh, actually, some this concept as a, it includes a three kind of architectural concept. Actually, Lambda actually has a three type of architectural concept. Uh, one is the serverless, uh, the other is function as a service, and third is event-driven architecture. So Lambda actually triggered by event, and actually is a kind of function as a services. Function as a services means um, you don't need to implement new logics for your application. Just by integrating the functions, you can you know, implement what you want. That is a function as a services. So if you have a, some, uh, if you create uh, some lambda functions, there's a, a function, b function, c function, maybe, then you can integrate that. Or, you can use you know, the other people's functions. So you can integrate in Lambda. Anyway, 
if it is a stateless you know, processing, then you can use lambda yeah, for that you know, logic. So it's in many uh, cases, like uh, mobile games or web-based games. Yeah, in such a type, game types, you can use the lambda as a main logic processing. Uh, and also, yeah, it's, um, for example, chatting. Yeah, so some uh, messenger services in your you know, games or also you can use the lambda. And next thing is, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that uh, next thing is a player authentication. Um, there is a two types of the authentication. There's authorization and authentication, right? What's the difference between the OS and OSR? OS and is authentication. OSR is authorization. Authentication means, as a simple question, authentication is a kind of question about uh, who you are. Is who you are? So okay, who you are? Then I say I show them my passport. <laughs> For example, uh, when you sign in, you type usually your username and password, and then that is also authentication. But authorization is uh, so what's the you know what can you do type of question. So if you admin. You can delete the users, or you can, you know, you know, approve the users in your communities. Um, that is because of you are, you know, super user. So you have, author you know, authorities to perform the features. That is authorization. Actually, we, uh, in many cases, uh, I think is uh, you can see it as um, you can uh, log in uh, into some uh, game uh, through. Uh, Know, Facebook or some Google IDs. That is a uh, means. Is so uh, actually you federate authorization processes with, you know, third-party providers like uh, Facebook. So Facebook actually provide uh, authentication. By using that authentication, yeah, you can play or you, you accept your server games accept the clients. So in such cases, we need a federation, and so we need to handle many, you know, authorization processes in conjunction with other sort of part, you know, player well, providers. To do that, we have a uh, Cognitor. So Cognitor offers player authentication as well as anonymous user capabilities uh, with uh, using a device ID, and also. Uh, Cognito uh, also provide uh, you know features that is to, you can link uh, through third party authentication uh, such as Google and Facebook, and also uh, Cognito has a uh, uh, synchronization features. It also uh, it provides uh, information synchronization uh, features, so uh, individuals actually can sync up his private data between uh, the devices. For example, um, if you have uh, some uh, book reader, you know, apps, and uh, when you buy some one books, then uh, you could you sh you must see the list in you know Android app or some notebook or anyway any in any in any devices. I think you can uh, see the all the you know your purchased li uh, book list, and it's just actually it requires a synchronization. That is a, a you know play authentication. Uh, it's a synchronization uh, user data uh, features, and also Cognito provides such you know synchronizations. So let's take a look at uh, those uh, build sublist game backend. Um, it's a very um, simple, but uh, if you take a look at this, so there is a client. And client uh, use Cognito uh, for authentications. And you can use Act3 uh, as a static content download or unloading. 
And also you can use uh, Dynamo databases and you can use uh, you know, Lambda for backend uh, logic processors. And also, yeah, definitely you can use uh, API Gateway uh, for a public API access point. So game client, uh, so there's a, some you can easily, actually it's a, you uh, can easily configure uh, those features, actually you don't need to care about the server, you know, settings or something. You just call the, uh, our managed services from your client and that's all. I said, you, that means you can get a huge advantage. Um, you don't, you know, without, you know, caring about the, you know, server architecture or something. Actually, it's a kind of function as a services. And also, um, sometimes actually in old generation we call it as two tier, pro, you know, two tier architectures, because there's a, there's a client and uh, server side is also only is um, uh, API based you know services. So we call it as uh, two tiers, but nowadays we call it as server side architecture. So let's take a look at the demonstration. Okay, this is a simple web games. <laughs> Actually, my friends uh, developed this game. So, but this web games, you can sign in uh, with Google. It's a, you know, example of federations. And you can just play it. And like this, is a, if you see this uh, scores, uh, there is uh, so many people in here. And many is Koreans, <laughs> Australian guys, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all our colleagues. And you can start it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can start it. Oh, yeah. um, I'm not a good player. <laughs> then it's a, it deploy, it actually is a Lambda actually, you know, handle the logic of these games again, side. And also it stored the scores into the Dynamo databases. So actually there is no servers at all in these games. So you can just play. So you can just call our uh, backend manage the services APIs. That's all. That's very simple, but it's a, it's quite simple. But it's, it's a, actually you can easily understand uh, what the benefit of the serverless architecture. So second thing is actually this is Android games. Okay. So it's a. Uh, it's a snake game. It's a very simple Android games, but I will take a look at this um, uh, uh, code, but uh, just uh, take a look at uh, the games. Okay, that is federations. It's um, uh, actually this game also use our cognitive services. Then you can log in with Amazon ID or Facebook or Google. It's a federation of features, but also uh, it, uh, you know, actually provide uh, uh, anony anonymous, you know, login too. Just, on, or just play. Okay, let's see it. Then I'm thinking is that actually data is uh, stored to Dynamo databases. Actually, it use API gateway and, and streaming gateways as uh, streamers. As, uh, anyway, so everything actually is, um, uh, there's no servers. There's no calling for servers. Just it, it calls our managed services APIs. That's all. So let's play it. New game. Yep, like this. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I failed. <laughs> There's a play. The game is over. Okay, let's take a look at the code. If you take a look at this, it's this uh, AWS count ID, is a cognitive to pull ID, a raw ID, S3 bucket name, Dynamo data table name, that is the endpoint information. And next thing is, you just use the, you know, these features of services in your game client. Is Android or so, so we provide an SDKs anyway, but it's uh, not important. So it's an um, Android game example. And also this is actually serverless game architecture. 
Cool. So uh, this is a very simple. <clears throat> uh, yes, actually, um, the previous web game and also this Android game uh, uh, are using uh, same uh, services: Cognito, Bat3, Lambda, API Gateway, Dynamic Database. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, the other thing is uh, you need uh, some see these pictures. Uh, this is uh, our uh, AWS global network of regions. Um, and if you use our AWS, you can take advantages of uh, those global networks uh, in your game production. Why? Why? Because our global network is optimized. If you if you if you know this, uh, I think you know the TCP mechanisms, right? If there is uh, some packet loss, it actually request another packet transmissions, right? So if if there is uh, so many packet losses, that means actually the time of transferring of data will increase exponentially because it's a default. It's you know, requesting logic actually follow the you know, exponential bad logics. For example, in first trial, it requests in, in uh, 100 milliseconds, but it failed. But did it, it, in such cases, second, in such second trial, you didn't ask in one millisecond. It becomes two seconds, it fails, 10 seconds, it fails, one minute, like exponentially increase. That is our algorithm. So if there is a, some, um, there is a many packet losses in one transmissions, then it's uh, the total you know, time of transferring will be a you know, huge number, okay? So the most important thing is that you should minimize the number of hops Hops means as a router, right? And you should re you know, reduce the you know, packet losses. This is a really important part if you are considering global services, okay? So, but it's a, the important point is that, so we actually have a, um, optimized you know, our managed global network between region and between uh, CDN points. So, so there, there is a available global nexus. So, for example, HTTP type game is um, uh, if you take a look at the numbers, then it's uh, up to 300 percent faster. Faster than using just global network. Okay, it's uh, your public public internet network. If you use uh, our global network, AWS, you know, dedicated, optimized global network, then you can get a, you know, a huge, you know, performance advantages. And there's, um, and also you, we have a uh, 48 for global edges. Global edges means the CDM, you know, caching uh, point, uh, so-called is a uh, uh, pop edge or something. And it's a, it's a kind of a small IDCs actually. And we have uh, uh, 16 regions in the world and 84 uh, CDN point. It's a user CDN point and regions. That means you are using our optimized global network. So like this, it's, um, yeah, same gay bag and but this is, in this case, it's just a, you are using public network, right? But if you use uh, AWS Edge location, and then you can get optimized throughput because you are using our global network. That's a huge difference. If you test it, maybe I think it's, you can use trash route. Then it's um, just compare that. There's a number of hops 
and the missing, you know, uh, you know, um, packet losses, right? Then I think it's a, it's a there are just huge differences actually. So um, at least you got uh, some uh, fifty percent, you know, you know, performance gains at least. And so, so when you uh, you know consider a global um, one world game services, then it's uh, really important. So if you uh, so there's a HTTP type games and also TCP type games, it's a two different uh, two kind of you know games. Uh, TCP is a uh, you know connection oriented, and so in such cases you need to install in nearest region, and just you know by uh, using the proxies, then you can you know connect to the, you know, your uh, main servers. Then you get a gains, you get a, you know, uh, advantages of, you know, uh, global net, our uh, global network. It's a tip. So, yeah, so, so, it's a, uh, uh, HTTP, so if, if you use a, so if you uh, use a, uh, uh, if you are, if your game is actually a HTTP based game, that um, you can easily get uh, advantages. Uh, but uh, in, in case of a TCP, um, you can get uh, the, some same, uh, you know, advantages by um, uh, packet uh, forwarding. Uh, so in such cases, uh, you need to use some proxies. There's um, uh, some tips. Okay, so um, like this. This is an example of a real-time game using global network. So, uh, there is uh, some Europe, uh, there is an uh, example of uh, the, um, a Singapore player and there is a European player uh, playing a real-time game uh, on a Virginia game servers, okay? There's some, um, uh, by default, inter-region communication use our AWS global network. It's allowing uh, more uh, consistent packet deliveries. So, yeah. So in, in these cases, you can take advantages of uh, you know, AWS global network just by uh, placing uh, proxies in closed region. Okay, cool. There is uh, next thing is a service architecture based on game types. All right. It oh. It yeah, was 40 minutes. Um, sorry, yeah. I need to hurry. <laughs> okay, uh, in, uh, I explained the benefit that AWS provides uh, for game services, uh, and the uh, best, uh, you know, uh, uh, in in this section, I want to talk about uh, uh, reference of service architectures. Well, there's a multiplayer game types. Um, there's many uh, uh, game types. Um, so. Uh, there's, I think, it's one to talk about three type of things. It's a uh, sync, a sync game. A sync game is uh, like a clash of a clan, and uh, the other thing is persistent type. Persistent type, uh, like is um, MMORPG. A session based time, a session based game is a uh, session type is a uh, so called is a turn turn based game. This is uh, just so you play this game uh, in, in in small rooms. Uh, if uh, after finishing the play, uh, actually the room is, is uh, you know disappear, and just you can uh, restart in new new game new rooms with other players. It's a kind of a turn based game. So it's a, there's a, some three type of games: a sync, persistence, session based. <coughs> okay, then as uh, let's talk about how to get the architecture on AWS for each of three types of game services, a sync type. So it's a basically is a kind, it is really similar to web-based, you know, services, web architectures. So you can able to uh, this um, as a serverless architecture. And um, there's a, uh, basically there are two type of, you know, architectures, two tier and three tier. Uh, two tier is a, there is a web servers and data store. Uh, three tier is a different thing is that there is a, a applicant servers between web front and data store. And also it is really easy to uh, get uh, some uh, cost effectiveness uh, because it, uh, we can apply auto scaling and uh, load balancers. 
Uh, also, uh, you can use pod instances. Uh, pod instances is like a, is a very uh, cheap uh, instance types uh, you can use uh, in very short time. <coughs> like this, it's a tutorial. Tutorial web application is very simple. Um, there are a lot of balances in front of uh, web servers, and actually a lot of balances, uh, you know, distribute the traffic into the web servers. And uh, behind all the web servers, there's a database data store services. It could be a databases or caches. Maybe, well, probably you can use that as a caches uh, with uh, databases, usually, to reduce the you know, uh, read performances. And uh, first tier, so actually the first tier is a web server, actually uh, handle the game logic. And second tier is the database services uh, that stores the state of the game. And yes, and in addition to, uh, for the high availability of the database tier, uh, you can use our AWS multi-age uh, features. Uh, if you turn on the multi-ages, uh, they'll, they'll uh, will be, uh, you know, uh, standby uh, databases in other ages. Yes, uh, and also, uh, mm, yeah, also you can use uh, F3 and CloudFront uh, for patch and update resources. Yeah, and also there's a three-tier web application architecture. So in this case is. Um, the biggest difference is that the business logic performed by uh, the web servers in two-tier architecture is separated into the, uh, some, you know, the other, uh, you know, intermediate medium uh, layers. So uh, actually, it is uh, usually used when uh, there is a time-consuming job to process the game logic, or when it is necessary to perform distributed processing or transition processing uh, at application level. So, uh, in other words, uh, if game contents requires a lot of, uh, you know, many features, like a complicated game logic processing or something, uh, you can apply the three-tier web application architecture uh, for uh, async-based games. This is a reference architecture for async game types. There's uh, some load balancers, and also there's a, two, it's actually, actually it's a two-tier game, uh, reference architectures. So, yeah, the backend uh, logic is very simple. Okay, so pers now let's go over to persistent type, usually uh, like a, a mm, MMO a game, yeah. Uh, in this type, it's a game uh, world is consistently maintained. And uh, yeah, is a uh, and uh, MMRP is uh, you know typical you know types for such kind of re requirement. Uh, in case of the, this kind of a persistent game, you can bring down the server uh, even if only one person is online, right? It's not easy to scale out, scale in. So in. So this game, is this game uh, type actually um, is it not easy to get uh, some cost effectiveness. And uh, so this type of game is particularly demanding the terms of performance requirement, uh, for example, databases, and also network. Uh, Database is required because complex queries and transactions are frequent in these game types. But uh, as you know, the database, RDBMS, is not easy to scale out and scale in. Yeah, because so the uh, uh, databases become uh, a bottleneck usually. And in addition, there are so many packet broadcast uh, among players. So that means the high performance network interfaces is required in these game types. It's a, there, is a, so, uh, there are two main problems. is a database bottleneck and network packet issues. I'll explain that. So general, there is a, a general MMOG architecture, so so-called realm-based server architecture. 
realm. Realm is a uh, uh, so is um actually the game state is maintained in both the cache and DB uh, as well as the game servers. So uh, I thought that is a in such cases the DB is usually become a bottleneck. Uh, so we uh, mainly uh, uh, use the uh, method of separation of services uh, into uh, the concept of the realm. Uh, so uh, that means that uh, since each DB is maintained by each realm uh, in order to play uh, with a friends in another realm, it is common to create a character in the realm or something. So you can, uh, so it says it is really hard to, you know, integrate a realm into one world. Uh, so it's, um, if you wanted to play the, some uh, your friend in different uh, realm, then you need to create new characters in your friend realm, right? It's a separate characteristics. So there is no you know, connect interconnections between your, you know, actually you can have uh, several uh, character, characters um, according to the realm, okay? So you have many, so it's a, there's so many you know, limitations. I, I have a high levels in one realm, but <laughs> the other realm, there's my character is a very low level, but there is no you know, interconnections. But I said, um, well, there's some, well, some game developers can provide some you know, uh, interconnections between uh, multi-characters, but anyway, so it's not easy so in the uh, architecture side. <coughs> Uh, but it, this structure actually the most popular structure of MMO game uh, prevalent in the world nowadays. But uh, engineers always try to overcome those kind <laughs> of uh, structures. So it's, uh, this is kind of integration of DBs. Um, if you you know uh, if you have uh, some one big uh, DB stores or data stores, then we can overcome those kind of problems. The one possibility is Aurora. Aurora actually have a master, big master, and can have 15 copies. So you can integrate the realm. But it's uh, actually, so it's, um, Aurora usually, uh, you know, five times uh, faster than MySQL, but it still have a limitations. So you can have uh, some, you know, limitations of master instance sizes. Is it, 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 it is, uh, I know, inevitable things. Uh, so next thing is using, it is a kind of, you know, one world MMO architecture. That means there is no realm concept. There is only one world in the games, MMO games. So it's actually, it's a, this is a game like a, uh, Eve Online on Dex and the Durango, and that, uh, it takes uh, these kind of architectures. Our main, uh, you know, a concept of this architecture is uh, they are using uh, NoSQL as a main databases. So I always told that it's, uh, you, know, you don't need to use uh, RDBMS for you know, MM games. Uh, the, the reason you use this some um, uh, RDBMS in MMO games is because they uh, because it's, uh, it requires a lot of you know transactions or queries or something complex queries, but but there's a two ways to overcome those kind of things. Uh, you can use that as uh, application logics to reduce the you know uh, data uh, complex uh, database queries, and the other is the transaction problems. You can use uh, two phases commit or some uh, you know uh, some uh, kind of application level. Uh, handling of you know, transactions in a NoSQL, or you can uh, use uh, some uh, uh, some specific features provided by uh, NoSQL. Uh, for example, Manga database or something. Okay, then you can. It's just very um, simple transaction uh, features, but you can use that. Uh, you can easily use that. And so, uh, in most cases, you don't need some, some very very complex you know uh, transactions at all. Oh, you must keep in well, the reason that it's a, so is a complex uh, uh, become uh, became a complex queries is that it's um 
as a, there's a, some uh, funny histories. Uh, in most cases, at uh, about uh, 20 years ago, uh, so in the in the you know uh, <coughs> starting uh, uh, use of our uh, databases uh, as a main database in games, uh, actually uh, there were many skillful database engineers. <laughs> database engineers actually uh, implemented many game logics in databases. Application, you know, usually application programmer were you know less careful at the time. So <laughs> they just they just you know uh, through their logic to the databases. So databases become very complex queries. That is a historic reason. But as um, you know, after that, just uh, they copy their uh, that architectures. But nowadays uh, you need to rearchitect all the you know concept of that. Okay, that is so uh, you can uh, make the logic be simpler, and also you can uh, absorb those logic into the application level, and you can use uh, NoSQL transactions, for example, to phase commit. Then you can easily you know use uh, NoSQL. NoSQL's you know advantage is scalability, right? So you can actually create a one-world MMO architecture. It's uh, my recommendation. Just separate the game logics and your users, you know, message, um, messaging or chatting. It's a totally different thing, okay? Cool. Also, you, you can use cache too. Uh, and also the problem is the uh, MMO usually uh, generally use the HTTP and TCP connections too. Right. Hmm. Um, so, what is unique uh, is that the server-to-server -server communication uh, is you can also use that as uh, using pops up functions of uh, Elastic Cache Redis clusters. So, if you need some pops up, then uh, use the Redis cluster. Okay. Okay. And the other problem is a uh, network. The last thing, network adapter. Um, the MMO game, uh, there's um, characteristic is that it's, uh, actually it, uh, there are so many small packets. And actually, it, uh, small packets, uh, you know, delivered among players uh, very fast. And so that is not the bandwidth problem. That is the frequency of the small packet, you know, read, you know, transmission. So, uh, many cases of network resources become a bottleneck in addition to the DB. Uh, I already explained because it's uh, it is open. Uh, it's a very small packets are transmitted frequently. So that means higher PPS supporting is more critical than network bandwidth. So, but as old architectures, only one, you know, core handle those, you know, system level network, uh, you know, transmitting, uh, you know, uh, algorithms. So usually at the time, uh, as old, you know, CPUs, usually is, um, one core is uh, fully, you know, use it uh, for, you know, small packet transmissions. So it's become a bottleneck in a network. It's not about the bandwidth. It's bandwidth is enough, but it's a, there's a, you know, if you see that some uh, CPU usages, only one core is hit the 100%, that means it's become bottleneck. So <coughs> you, you, know, you, you need multiplexing <laughs> in uh, your CPUs for uh, small packet transmissions. Uh, trans uh, uh, so, uh, uh, because there's a typical virtual machine handles and network interrupts on a single core. So, so it is often the case that a CPU core cannot utilize the cores and throttles uh, just in a, in a single core. So, so it's, um, um, if you take a look at the CPU usage patterns and then you can see the overall CPU utilization and memory resources are relaxed, but 
The specific CPU cores hit the 100% uh, due to frequent packet processing. So in this case, it's a 4DS, we have a, a ENA, Elastic Network Adapter. And um, we call it, a, it's actually a dedicated network adapter. Uh, so we provide, actually AWS provides this, uh, you know, dedicated network adapter. We call it a um, ENA. Uh, this adapter has a high PPS and uh, because it handles network interrupts in up to eight cores. So in, in, in these, those kind of, you know, uh, architectures, uh, you need to use ENA. It's a very important architecture point. Uh, if you didn't know these <laughs> problems, please remember, keep in mind, please. So MMO, uh, if you, if you want to develop some MMO type games, then that there is two, only two problems. It's not easy to scale in, scale out because of databases and there are potential, you know, risks about network, you know, PPS problem. PPS means is, uh, uh, it's a packet per second, okay? PPS. High PPS is one of the problem, and it's a unit, uh, uh, you know, ENI. I think it's a, you, uh, maybe I think it's if you use uh, on-prem, uh, you know, uh, servers, uh, there are so many uh, good network cards for supporting those kind of, you know, yeah, high PPS, okay? So it's uh, not easy, actually. So, um, uh, Actually, so in, um, in uh, practical, you know, development, you need uh, some optimization technologies uh, in kernel level. In many cases, well, many, uh, you know, uh, scalable engineers, uh, actually they optimize their uh, Linux kernel for their game servers. Yeah, it's a very important. And also that is a kind of know-how, yeah. Okay, so session based. Session based is the most most you know a prevalent case of real time games. Uh, and it's uh, usually you know MOABA uh, and also FPS. Do you know the FPS shooting games? This is kind of session turn based games, so called. And it's um, so it's uh, you usually some you know, you know players is uh, set up some uh, you know teams, and they play each other, and after the end of the game, that you just you know disappear, uh, the, the 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 turns, and that is a session based game. Okay, but it's like eighty percent of the game actually session based game. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay, the session type and the room are made, and the room disappears when the gameplay is finished, and uh, it is mo uh, most common uh, types in the current pitch games. Also, uh, mobile games too now, yeah. And then so, uh, so uh, there is no state status after the game uh, has ended. Um, uh, only is uh, there is in when the game session is in progress. So there is no state sharing between game sessions independently of each other. So it is not easy, but it is not it is possible to scale in, out, in those kind of game session types, uh, session-based types game. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's why we have a ga Amazon Game Lift. Uh, next session is <laughs> actually about a game lift. <clears throat> okay, so you can easily, it's a managed game servers, well, session-based game server uh, services. Uh, you can easily create a, so, you know, game, a uh, fleet uh, for a session based game types and you can easily manage that uh, scale in, scale out. Uh, it has many you know, features. Uh, you can, if you use that as a game lift, then you can easily create a very uh, reliable and scalable uh, game uh, servers. Okay, it's an architecture for session based game. A minimal component required is a lobby. There is a usually have a lobby servers waiting for the game and matchmaking servers. And also game servers dedicated to the game player. And on the, uh, also there is a chat server, you know, leaderboard, 
uh, cash is over. And there's uh, additional uh, features for operation is um, checking game sessions, uh, also uh, monitoring tools as it is required. So that's why we have a game lift, a managed platform for hosting session-based multiplayer games, scale in, scale out automatically according to the player situation, automatic game re replacement to a low latency region for optimal playback experience, support for game server updates without downtime, resistance to DDoS attack, so many things. Uh, if you, de if you develop such kind of features in your game servers, it is not easy actually. As in you need a very uh, experienced uh, game server engineers. This is a reference architecture for this uh, session game type. Okay, just skip it. It says, um, uh, we have um, no time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, game analytic system architecture, uh, okay. Um, So actually, we have uh, many analytics uh, services, so you can easily use, uh, there is uh, our processing. Uh, we, um, the data flows is uh, very simple. The m uh, first thing is that you need to ingest your uh, data into the store, you know, some storing services. So data store at three is kind of a store for your data processing. So called that is a uh, data data lake. Okay, and next thing is just processing the, your data. So there is a, some ingest, store, processing. It's a main three steps of your analytics. So there is a, so many our many services like uh, Redshift is um, uh, our data warehouses. And also we have a EML, and also we have a, a, a Theta is a like a, you know, a BigQuery is a Google's BigQuery services, and also we have a dashboard, uh, Amazon QuickSight, and also many third-party tools. So it's a general game data analytics architecture. So there, there is a game service in uh, in front of that, it's an, and also uh, Kinesis is our uh, Streaming data processing services uh, handle the data processing and uh, and uh, it processes in uh, you know KCL in uh, at the consumer real time state and it stores at uh, wizard into at three uh, or we can use a Redshift Athena YAML yeah simply speaking we have uh, many analytic services and. Yeah, uh, it, it can be um, easily integrated with other services. So if you store the data into the F3, then you can uh, easily, you know, import uh, all data into Redshift and just by, you know, Redshift actually based on a post PostgreSQL. So it supports standard SQL, but it's really fast because it supports uh, MMP, massive parallel process, MPP, massive parallel processing. Yeah. Okay, just skip it. As a supercell analytic use, use cases. And, and sometimes you, you, uh, you can run, uh, you can uh, run uh, analytics in a workload uh, in the other region. Why? Because it is cheaper. If the prices are different in every region, and maybe it's usually Virginia region is the cheapest, so many companies actually uh, is, are using uh, the analytics in analytic processing in uh, Virginia region. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so uh, it's not easy, okay, uh, but. Um, Next thing is, uh, yeah, so Lumboya. Uh, Lumboya and Game Lift. Um, okay, let's take a look at it. 
Uh, game game lift is um I already told that it's, it's actually uh, it manages uh, game services for uh, session based game types. And uh, there's um uh, so it's a uh, I think it's uh, already I think you know that the concept of session based games here. Uh, also, I wanted to show the, some game lib, uh, the features, and next thing is a demo. Okay, so scaling multiplayer game is hard, and deploy and scale multiplayer games in minutes with Amazon Game Lift. For example, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at, at scaling, one of the biggest reasons to use Game Lift uh, the vertical axis is server usages, and the horizontal axis is time flow. Um, but, uh, in uh, multiplayer games, there are uh, many players. Uh, many players uh, will play games usually um, in weekends or uh, evening, or morning or lunch time, right? And so usually it's uh, the, the traffic uh, ratio is a uh, one to ten. It's a uh, high spike you know, traffic, usually ten times than you know the lowest one. It's a very huge, big differences. So, uh, if you moderate the number of servers for these multiplayer games, then uh, you will not be able to cover peak time users, and that means actually. It leads to a queue, queuing uh, is a bad, you know, customer experience, and that means it will in decrease your revenues. And actually, the more important point is that many players will start to leave your games, and eighty percent of game, you know, you know uh, left gamers never return. 80%. It's a big impact. But uh, in this case, is uh, uh, in this case, is server is expanded too much. Okay, it's a provision too much. So that is uh, it uh, cost a lot. So game lift auto scaling, yeah, it's a uh, flexible uh, scaling out uh, according to your uh, traffic's. It's a very optimized, it provides optimized you know, <coughs> operation cost. Also, customers good experience. That's why you are using uh, Amazon Game Lift. Yeah, so it's a managed platform for uh, hosting session-based multiplayer games. Key value is automated server management, cost optimization with aut automated scaling, and global low latency, and DDoS protection. DDoS is really severe threat in your <laughs> games in most cases. Have you ever experienced a DDoS attack? It's a really, you know, mega crazy. <laughs> yes, it's a good, good session-based game, okay? I already explained. Yeah, it's in the top 10 play uh, apps is actually uh, session-based. As uh, this data is uh, uh, in Korea. <coughs> Um, yeah, that's good. Even if you create these session-based multiple games, designing, prototyping, stabilizing, and comparing, managing tools is costly and time-consuming. But if you use game lift, you can easily, yeah, get on many advantages. Why? Uh, actually, our uh, Amazon. Uh, is considering that as a um, game gaming industry will be our next generation, uh, you know, promising market. So we are investing a lot uh, into gaming. So we have a you know really big one team for uh, gaming um, in Seattle and uh, uh, you know Vancouver. So. <laughs> it is actually biggest team in the uh, Amazon, totally. And uh, actually, we are developing Lombard. I think you uh, you've heard that is a Lombard, right? It's a client engine 
Do you know the un Unreal Engine? Okay, so it's a similar one. It's a, yeah. It's a based on Cray Engine. Yeah, so. Um, Lumbria, there's a big uh, client engines. At, it actually triple uh, A level uh, game engines. And also we have a, a game lift uh, in server side. It's a managed services. So yeah, it supports fleet. Fleet is a, um, you know, it's a group of servers. Yeah, and, uh, you, there's a, we call it the fleet. You can deploy your game servers uh, fleet based, okay? It can be one instances in one fleet or many instances in one fleet, too. So this shows that how to build and how you know uh, you know deploy the instances in the fleet. Uh, you can create a uh, more than one game server uh, processes per instance. Uh, Yeah, so um, maybe it's a game server is uh, actually a kind of game sessions, uh, or it's kind of rooms, and um, yeah, this actually is uh, based on your configuration. So uh, basically, uh, it's just a take a look at a simple uh, uh, develop environment. It's a uh, four steps: upload a building builder uh, using AWS CRI, upload your you know uh, exact code executable your game game application and uh, onto your uh, you know uh, Lumberyard and and next thing is you create a fleet and configure game clients and connect the players that is a simple uh, you know uh, steps uh, to use game lift so first thing is unload the build uh, you can use a CRI or you can use our console and Next thing is it's a uh, uh, configuration for fleet, yeah. And now uh, there's a that is the next thing is is um yeah many configuration in here you can uh, set up the you know uh, the the paths uh, for binaries in your servers and uh, concurrent processor numbers and port ranges and protocols and address ranges okay, so yeah you can configure that those things and and you can c configure scaling policies too then after that you can create a fleet creation uh, this is a uh, yeah finally the created fleet and next thing is just you know connect your client to your fleets okay let's take a look at the uh, configuration processes. Hi, this is Alex Peterson with Amazon. In this video, I'll show you how to create an Amazon Game Lift fleet for the multiplayer project. You'll learn how to create a fleet, specify the EC2 instance type to use for your game sessions, and the network ports your game uses, as well as the launch path and parameters. The first step is to create an Amazon Game Lift fleet from the web console. Log in to your Amazon Web Services account and navigate to the Amazon Game Lift console. Also, be sure to sign in to the same account that you attached the Amazon Game Lift policy to. Now, in the console, select Builds from the menu bar, and on the Builds page, select the build you want to use by clicking the radio button in the leftmost column. After you have selected the build, click the Create Fleet button, and you should now see a configuration page that displays a form with the build and build ID fields already populated with the build you just selected. In the Fleet Details section, Enter a fleet name and optionally enter a description. Next, you need to specify the EC2 instance type to use for your game servers. For the multiplayer project, select the C3 large EC2 instance type, which has more than enough power to run the game server. By the way, if you'd like more information on EC2 instance types, see the instance type section in the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud user guide. The next step is to specify the network ports to open. For the multiplayer project, we need to open port 33435, 
So in the EC2 port settings section, press the add port setting button and enter 33435. Next, change the protocol to UDP and the CIDR to 0.0.0.0/0. And when you're done configuring the port settings, press the check mark to the right of the port fields to apply your settings. The final step is to specify the launch path and parameters for the game server binary. In the game launch section, enter the following. For the launch path, we're providing the relative path from our game server folder to the server executable. The log paths are relative paths to our log folders, and this is especially important because after a game session ends, the contents of these folders are preserved and can be downloaded later. For the multiplayer project, we just need one path, but you could add multiple paths if you wanted. The launch parameters we specified are passed to our game server binary when it launches. SV underscore port will set the game server port, and the start underscore lobby command will execute code on our game server that starts the Amazon Game Lift service and tells GameLift when it's ready for clients to connect. Go ahead and click Initialize Fleet to start the fleet initialization process. It's going to take several minutes to create and activate your fleet, but when it's done, you'll see the fleet status set to active. Congratulations, you've now successfully created an Amazon GameLift fleet. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to create a game session and connect players. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let us know what you think. Yeah, uh, that is a tutorial. Uh, I think you can easily understand. Okay, so I want to show the next uh, video. Today. It's, uh, it's about uh, Lumberyard. It's, uh, Lumberyard is our client engine, game client engine. Um, the thing is believing. Let's take a look at this. Actually, this uh, image is actually created by Lumberyard. This is also the other demonstration for Lumberyard. Let's take a look at it.
could see the very realistic textures of the every you know, object. Yeah, so also Lomboyard support a mobile development. And this demonstration actually integrate uh, with, um, you know, game lib. And it's uh, developed by Lomboyard, it's a mobile game. Yeah, it's uh, session based that you can kind of play the game. Um, it, this is uh, the other guys, the login, they said, uh, the other guys is control the other, you know, yeah, this uh, is, uh, oh, that's all. Okay, uh, almost done. Okay, so, so there's uh, some several pa more pages, but I think it's a little bit closed, our session here. So do you have any questions about that? Now. So if you have a question, please let me know. Uh, uh, perhaps if it's nobody asking, I would like to know how if the uh, audience here wish to actually collaborate or participate in your game lift project. Uh, oh yeah, so game lift is uh, you, if you so uh, use if you have a AWS account, then you can just use our uh, game lift. Yeah, so there's a uh, there's uh, some many, yeah, I said the network is uh, quite slow, okay. And a uh, lumber yard is a game engine is a uh, free. So you can uh, use this, there's a web for your PC game development and also mobile uh, game development too. And we are, our roadmap actually is supporting for um, console games too. So if you need some um, client engine, game engine, then there's a, you know, just a, a Unity or Unreal and Lumbaya. Is it, there is three choices, but for 3Ds and mobiles, so mobile is a unity is a good, but I think it's a, if you support if you want to support uh, PC and mobile and a console uh, simultaneously, then is a lumber yard is only one solution now. A game lift is uh, like like this, so you can use this you know services uh, in your console easily if you have an account, then you can also actually we have a. Uh, supporting programs, and you can get us uh, some our creden uh, credits, and um, maybe I think it's a uh, uh, you can use GameLib uh, without you know payment by using credit. So just so you can launch uh, in here. And so like it's very simple. Yeah. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you for uh, taking your time in here. So thank you for your attention. Thank Bye. you very much. Uh, we actually would like to uh, remind you to come back at uh, one twenty for the afternoon session. Yeah. Thank you. Have a have a great lunch. <laughs> Sorry, actually, uh, before everyone leave, I actually w d wanted to know: is there any like a bis uh, business sharing, profit sharing models and things like that? How is the things work? Sir? Uh, no, let's say they participate, like uh, like Google or that is take certain percentage. Uh -huh. But uh, if they join the platform, uh -huh. it's free since. So how is the revenue things going to be shared or commissioned and anything? Oh, yeah, so there's a, so, uh, if you, uh, some, uh, there's a, uh, we have a, always a pricing policies. So if you Google, there's some AWS service name, like a game lift uh, price. Then you can easily find that. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't. 
yeah, like this. It's a game lead price, then you can easily, um, yeah, Google it, and then so you can uh, find the, our pricing policies in here. Yeah, so, but uh, if you apply it as um, credits in your account, then it's, um, you can use the you know, services without payment, yeah, up to the cre credit you know, price, okay? And uh, one more thing is just curious, uh, how they want to choose, there, there are a few platforms around. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the difference between putting it in your Google and in, in Amazon? Uh, okay, so basic uh, thing is that uh, so you must uh, understand uh, the features uh, every uh, cloud, prov uh, cloud provider actually providing. Um, there is uh, many services in uh, you know, cloud you know, uh, platform. Um, but uh, you need to uh, find out the exact services what you need. So some other you know, uh, cloud provider, uh, cloud computing you know, companies is quite, uh, you know, act actually uh, have a strong you know, advantages on some specific region or some specific area. Uh, the other is uh, you know, some other specific area. So, so you can, uh, uh, if you have some, uh, get some leverages uh, of uh, several, you know, uh, cloud provider, you can uh, integrate your uh, services uh, with the several uh, cloud provider. So there is a one way. Uh, but there is, a, for example, some, some features are very, very great in some uh, cloud provider, the others, you know, the others. Then as, um, uh, you can use as our AWS in some specific areas, but the others in some of the other, you know, yeah. <laughs> I saw that uh, just now you mentioned everywhere in the world you have connected, uh -huh. except for China. Uh -huh. So is there any plan for, because China is a huge market and yeah. it's uh, one of the toughest markets yeah. to enter. So yeah. is there any plan in future to actually expand it to China? Yeah, we are going to open a new uh, region in uh, China soon, and um, yeah, I think is uh, we can use that. Yeah, that soon. Yeah, yeah so China is a good, really big market. Yeah. But it's a, there is some many uh, regulation issues in market, so that's why. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank I you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.